Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the AW Dynamite review. And Dynamite tonight, I thought it was a good show tonight, in my opinion. Really enjoyed uh, Dynamite tonight, very entertaining show. And tonight we saw the TNT Championship on the line. Darby Allen defended the title against Joey Janela. We also saw Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson. They end up taking on Peter Avalon and Caesar Bononi. I think that's how you pronounce uh, his last name. We had uh, Pac versus uh, Ryan Nemeth. Of course, Dolph Ziggler's brother. MJF and Jericho versus the Acclaimed. We had uh, the women's... World Championship Eliminated Tournament uh, officially kick off tonight, where we saw Thunder Rosa versus Layla Hirsch. And the main event, we had a Falls Count Anywhere match. Kenta teamed up uh, with Kenny Omega to take on uh, John Moxley and Lance Archer. But overall, this was a good Dynamite tonight. Very good show. Very entertaining. So let's jump right into the Dynamite review. So Dynamite kicked off tonight with the TNT Championship on the line. Darby Allen defended the title against Joey Janela, which this was a pretty decent match here. Match started off with uh, Darby Allen and Janela going back and forth. And Darby Allen ended up working on Joey Janela's arm, which uh, he got back to the corner and took a back elbow. Darby Allen then delivered a springboard arm drag, which he then followed up by a drop kick, which sent uh, Joey Janela to the ring apron. So Janela then ended up giving Darby Allen a a uh, flapjack on the ring apron, which he then followed up with a suicide dive uh, to Darby Allen. So Janela then ended up heading up to the top turnbuckle. He did a double sledge over Darby Allen's head. Janela went up uh, to the top uh, turnbuckle again. Darby Allen ended up yanking Janela uh, down off the top rope. Janela was then able to uh, slingshot uh, the middle rope into Darby Allen's face. So he had Joey Janela uh, out to the floor. Darby Allen ended up hitting a suicide dive uh, to Janela. He ended up throwing Janela back into the ring. Darby Allen then ended up going for a springboard coffin drop, which he was then caught in midair with uh, a German suplex from Joey Janela. So the match ended with uh, Darby Allen end up dropping Joey Janela, went to the top rope. Darby Allen went to the top rope, and he ended up delivering a coffin drop, which connected onto Joey Janela. Darby Allen then went for the cover, and there you go. Darby Allen ended up winning the match, retaining the TNT Championship. But overall, this was a very decent match. You know, very back and forth between Darby Allen and Joey Janela. But really liked it. And then we had John Moxley. John Moxley uh, was saying that Kenta has been calling him out for months. And he ended up saying, when Kenta ended up attacking him last week, it was no surprise. Yes, if you remember at the end of Dynamite last week, Kenta ended up attacking uh, Moxley because Moxley is the IWGP United States Champion and him and Kenta will uh, face each other on February 26th. So Moxley ended up saying, the time for cheap talk is over. And Moxley end up saying that he thinks Kenta knows that. So he ended up promoting their match uh, with the IWGP United States Championship on the line 
on February 26th. He kept saying that that match on February 26th is sanctioned. But the Falls Count Anywhere match later on will not be. So Moxie ended up wishing uh, Kenta and uh, Kenny Omega good luck taking them off the board. And he ended up saying that tonight is just for fun. So there you go. That was what Moxley had to say. So then we saw the Inner Circle. The Inner Circle was in their locker room. Sammy Guevara ended up asking them for a minute so he can talk with MJF. So the guys end up leaving a locker room. There was only Sammy Guevara and MJF in there. Sammy ended up saying that he knows what MJF is up to, especially after last week. He ended up saying that he knows MJF is trying to take over the inner circle. MJF ended up saying that he thought Guevara was just jealous of him, since he was the apple of Jericho's eye, and that he is Jericho's new favorite. So MJF ended up realizing it's not that, and that he thinks Guevara actually hates Jericho and doesn't like to play second fiddle to him. So MJF went on, and he ended up saying that he thinks Guevara is upset, and he wants to take it over. So Guevara uh, then repeated uh, what MJF ended up saying. MJF ended up responding that, that that's exactly what he wanted to hear. So MJF ended up taking his and MJF ended up taking his phone. Guevara ended up realizing that MJF was recording him, recording what uh, he was saying. So Guevara ends up taking MJF's uh, phone. He throws the phone against the wall. And Guevara then punches MJF. And he left the room. And that was basically that. So, but there was more that happened with Guevara uh, later on uh, that happened, which we'll get to. So then we had Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson versus Peter Avalon and Cesar, Cesar Bononi. I think that's how you pronounce uh, his last name. But this match was just okay. And I'm like, when you know you have Peter Avalon in the match, you already know that it's that he's going to be terrible. And it was. Peter Avalon is fucking terrible in the ring. God awful. And I was like, last week, who wins? Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson is going to win the match. Looky here. Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson ended up winning the match. We had uh, Johnson uh, rolled up Peter Avalon for the win. So Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson ended up winning the match. I was like, Lee Johnson rolled up Peter Avalon. I'm like, yeah, goodbye, Peter Avalon. So overall, the match was just meh, in my opinion. And this match tonight uh, led to AW officially giving Lee Johnson a contract. It was reported. It was reported that uh, after the match, AW officially gave Lee Johnson a AW contract. So, but that's awesome. You know, Lee Johnson uh, deserves it. Even, I gotta say, Cesar uh, Bononi did pretty uh, decent in this match. He was better than Peter, than Peter Avalon also. So, overall, the match was just meh, in my opinion. Keep Peter Avalon on AEW Dark, please. Please. Uh, what, what did they got for him on Dynamite? 
keep them on dark. So post match, we had uh, Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall. They end up heading out, and Tony Schiavone was on the stage, and we had Lee Johnson uh, is asked about his first win from Tony Schiavone. Johnson ended up saying that he wishes he had more words for Shivani. But after a year of going 0 and 29, that's it. He was shown by his trainers hard work pays off. So there you go. That was what Lee Johnson had to say. And so then we went to Dasha. This was uh, done earlier today, where Dasha was with the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick. So the Bucks end up talking with Dasha about Jericho and MJF winning a title opportunity, to, you know, to face them for the World Tag Team Championships. So the Bucks end up saying, well, let's ask the Good Brothers about that. Because they were asked about not lasting too long in the uh, Tag Team Battle Royal last week. If you remember, uh, if the Bucks won the Tag Team Battle Royal last week, they would get to pick their opponents. But unfortunately, they end up getting eliminated. And that's when Jericho and MGF won the Battle Royal last week. So they get a shot at the Bucks for the... Uh, World Tag Team Championships. So, we had the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, show up. Matt and Nick end up saying, had they won, they were going to pick the Good Brothers. You know, if the Bucks would have won the Tag Team Battle Royal, they were going to pick uh, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson. So the Good Brothers say it wasn't like they were trying to take them out. The Inner Circle eliminated them. So Matt Jackson end up saying, how about next week? The titles will be up for grabs against Santana and Ortiz. So there you go. And then we went backstage. Uh, Dasha was talking with Hangman hey Adam Page, and she was asking if Page is looking to team up with Matt Hardy. Page ended up replying to Dasha, he said no. And that Matt Hardy, he says, but Matt Hardy says they are special together. And Page should at least let him take him out for drinks. So Matt Hardy ended up saying that it will be on him. Page end up saying, okay. So, Page ends up going to get his phone. And he ends up bumping into the Dark Order. So, there was a conversation between uh, Page and the Dark Order. Page end up saying that he's going to the bar with Matt Hardy. So, Page then walked through the Dark Order end up getting his phone. So, that was that. So, it looks like uh, Matt Hardy is trying to uh, get Paige uh, to join him. Like, Matt Hardy's being like this sneaky uh, guy who wants, you know, he has private party and now he wants Paige uh, to join him. And then we had Pac versus Dolph Ziggler's brother, Ryan Nemeth, which this was a decent match here. The match started off with Pac hitting a suplex on Ryan Nemeth. Nemeth ended up climbing back up, and he took a back elbow from Pac. Pac ended up going up to the top rope and delivered a missile drop kick. Nemeth then ended up getting a few shots in on Pac, but Pac end up delivering uh, kicks to uh, Nemeth's face and his midsection. Nemeth went out to the floor. 
pack, end up following him, throw uh, Nemeth right back into the ring. We had uh, Nemeth end up delivering a kick, and he ended up landing a DDT on Pack, which Pack went head first uh, to the mat uh, with the DDT uh, from Ryan Nemeth. So Pack ended up rolling out to the floor. But at the end of the match, you had Pack end up going up to the top rope. He hit the black arrow, and then he right he went right into the brutalizer. Nemeth ended up tapping out. So there you go. Pack end up winning the match. An overall decent match, but you know, very uh very quick match here. So then we had highlights of the wedding between Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford, which we saw last week. Miro ended up calling uh, Chucky T, or Charles, a gutless bastard, for shackling him into the corner. Miro ended up saying that he's going to find Orange Cassidy, and that he's going to put Chucky T in the hospital, right next to his buddy, Trent. So it then cut to Orange Cassidy and Chucky T. They were sitting together. Cassidy ended up telling Chucky T, I mean, what did they think was going to happen? And so they have a little bit of the bubbly. So that was that. So then we went backstage and we saw Dasha with Jericho, along with uh, Hager and Warlow. Dasha ended up noting that the entire inner circle wasn't out there. So MJF ends up stumbling up uh, with his ribs now taped up. He had Santana and Ortiz behind him. So MJF ended up telling Jericho that he thinks Sammy Guevara broke his ribs. And Jericho couldn't believe it. And he ended up telling MJF, they have a match to worry about. So they end up making their way out for their entrance. And we had uh, Jericho and MGF versus the acclaimed, you know, Anthony Bowens and Max Caster. So this was a pretty uh, good match here. MGF uh, ended up getting shoved and he rolled out to the ring because of his ribs hurting. Jericho ends up coming in. He takes uh, you know, shots from Max Caster. He then got sent into the corner. Bowens ends up delivering a boot to uh, Jericho's face. Max Caster ends up hitting a side suplex uh, to Jericho. Bowens ends up delivering a uh, slingshot elbow drop to Jericho. He went for the cover, which Jericho ends up kicking out. MGF ends up tagging in. And he ended up getting slammed. And MGF ended up getting kicked in his ribs. MGF then pulled on Max Caster's hair to get him into the corner. So MGF ended up reaching over for a eye rake on Max Caster. Jericho and MGF end up beating uh, Caster up in the corner. MGF. Uh, did a abdominable stretch. So, at the end of the match, you had Jericho and MGF end up winning the match, where Jake Hager end up shoving Max Caster off the top rope while the referee wasn't looking. So, we had Jericho end up hitting uh, the Judas Effect. And there you go, Jericho and MGF Ended up winning the match. Post-match, Sammy Guevara ended up coming out. Jericho ended up asking Guevara what the problem is with him. Sammy ended up saying that he told Jericho that if one more thing happened with MGF, he's done with the group. So Sammy then ended up telling Jericho that 
he's done. He's officially done with the inner circle. Guevara has quit the inner circle. So Jericho was responding, oh, what do you mean? And that's when uh, Guevara ended up saying that he quits the group. He quits the inner circle. So MJF uh, was looking uh, proud of that. So Jericho was all in shock. He looked upset. And that was basically uh, what happened. So there you go. Sammy Guevara is is officially done with the inner circle. He's quit. And, you know, right here, this looks like, you know, AEW pointing Sammy Guevara into a babyface run. So, there you go. We'll see what AEW now has planned with Sammy Guevara as a singles competitor. It, as a babyface singles competitor. And then Alex Marvez uh, caught up with Guevara. Marvez ended up asking him why he's leaving the group. So Sammy ended up saying that he needs to refocus and have some time away from the company, from AEW. So, there you go. Guevara is... Uh, gonna be out for a while. Needs to uh, needs to find himself refocus. And as he comes back, you know we're gonna see him as, like I said, a singles competitor, as a babyface. So then we went to Matt Hardy and Hangman Adam Page at the bar. Matt Hardy ended up saying that he was buzzing off their win last week. And that he feels like that him and Paige are magic as a team. So Matt Hardy uh, was going to uh, drink, but we see Matt Hardy just dumping his drink out. Matt Hardy ended up saying that he feels like Paige could dominate AEW and be richer than their wildest dreams. So Matt Hardy then brings out his contract. And of course, this is... Matt Hardy, of course, being sneaky, of course, and getting, uh, he got private party to sign, and now he, he's getting uh, Hangman and Page to sign. So he ended up saying that Page could be amazing, and that Matt Hardy will only take 30%. So Matt Hardy ends up looking to the camera, and he ends up saying that he wants him here to make it official. Because Paige will probably be mad when he realizes what he did when he's sober. So Paige was drunk. So Paige and Matt Hardy signed the contract. So Matt Hardy ended up saying that he has to head off. And that was that. So Hangman and Paige signed the contract. So he was drunk. And now he's going to be surprised. When he's sober. So, there you go. It's probably going to lead to Paige and Matt Hardy having a feud uh, together. Paige is going to somehow get out of this contract uh, with Matt Hardy. And it's going to be a feud as the, uh, the months come. Which I am uh, predicting. So then we had Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone was in the ring, and he was talking with Sting about the upcoming match with him and Darby Allen facing Brian Cage and Ricky Starks at Revolution. So Sting ended up trying to go to talk, and Taz ended up showing up on the screen. Taz was sitting next to uh, Will Hobbs, Powerhouse Hobbs. So... We had the camera end up pan to the back. And we see Brian Cage and Ricky Starks there. And Darby Allen was zipped up in a body bag. So Cage and Ricky Starks end up run to the back of the truck. And they end up dragging Darby Allen through the parking lot 
in a body bag. So the truck just uh, goes and Darby Allen's just being dragged uh, by the truck in the body bag, uh, which was crazy. So Sting ends up getting out of the ring, going to the back. So now it's basically that, but crazy how to see, you know, Darby Allen being dragged uh, through the parking lot in a body bag. It's very crazy. So then we saw Alex Marvez. And this was shot earlier in the day. Alex Marvez ended up finding Kenny Omega on a golf course. So Kenny Omega ended up saying to Marvez that he doesn't want to talk. Especially when he's golfing. So Omega ends up telling Marvez to watch this shot out of the stand. So Omega then ended up hitting the the golf ball out of the sand. And he says he asks Marvez a que- that'll answer a question. Marvez ends up wondering what Kenny Omega is doing at the golf course rather than prepping for a match uh, with his partner Kenta, who doesn't really like him. So Omega ends up saying that he's not going to lock himself in a room and study tape. With Don Callis. He ends up saying that he's going to be out with nature. To clear his mind. He says he hasn't lost in a while. And doesn't plan on losing. Tonight. So Omega ends up saying that he's going to put on a show. So Omega ends up. Uh, hitting the ball into the hole. And then. He ends up putting the ball in Marvis's pocket. So Marvez ends up asking Kenny Omega and Don Callis for a ride. And they just leave Alex Marvez behind on the golf course. So that was that. And then we had Thunder Rosa versus Layla Hirsch. The women's title eliminated tournament uh, started tonight here uh, with these two. Which This was a solid match here. Thunder Rosa started off the match with some arm drags on Layla Hirsch. She delivered a body slam and a run and senton. Went for the cover, which Hirsch ended up kicking out at two. Hirsch went up to the top rope and hit a hurricanrana, which sent Thunder Rosa out to the floor. Hirsch then came back with a suicide dive to Thunder Rosa. And she ended up going for another one. But... Uh, Thunder Rosa was in the ring. Hirsch ended up rolling up uh, Thunder Rosa, but uh, Thunder Rosa ended up fighting her off. And at the end of the match, Thunder Rosa uh, won the match. She ended up pinning the uh, Thunder Driver to Layla Hirsch. So you go, Thunder Rosa won the match, and she now advances to the second round in the women's title eliminator tournament. But overall it was a solid match. And also uh this Monday on uh AW's YouTube channel here on YouTube, uh it's gonna be the uh Japan side of uh the women's uh you know of the women's uh title eliminator tournament. So that's going to be taking place uh, this Monday at 7 on AEW's YouTube channel, which we'll see the uh, the match from Japan. So looking forward to that. You know, something to watch before we before I get bored with Monday Night Raw. So then we had Tony Schiavone. And this was done earlier in the day. Tony Schiavone was talking with Jungle Boy. Tony Schiavone ended up saying that Marco Stunt is okay after being scooped up by FTR. Jungle Boy ended up saying that two weeks ago, he had a match with Dax Harwood. And he had never had a match like that. Jungle Boy ended up saying that he came out a different man after picking up that win against Dax Harwood. 
Here I'm saying that they never reported FTR. It says next time they meet, he is going to make Dax Harwood his bitch. So that was what Jungle Boy had to say. So then uh, they announce uh, the matches that we're going to see on uh, next week's edition of Dynamite. It's going to be FTR versus uh, Matt and Mike Saito. Heyman Page, Matt Hardy, and Private Party versus The Hybrid 2 and Chaos Project. We're going to see Sting ends up calling out Team Taz. And the women's title elimination uh, tournament continues with Serena Deeb, the NWA Women's World Champion, versus Riho. So that should be a pretty uh, decent uh, women's uh, match there. And, of course, we're going to be getting uh, the Bucks versus Santana and Ortiz, where the World Tag Team titles are going to be on the line. So all that's going to be taking place next week on Dynamite. So then we went to the main event, the False Count Anywhere match. Kenta and Kenny Omega versus John Moxley and Lance Archer. And this was the best match of the night. This was a very entertaining false count anywhere match. We had uh, Omega and Kenta start off the match where Kenta end up sending his briefcase into Lance Archer's face. Omega then uh, stomped away on John Moxley. Kenta then end up shoving Omega away to stop on Moxley. So Omega and uh, Moxley were arguing out loud. So then we had the main event. The Falls Count Anywhere match. Kenny Omega and Kenta versus John Moxley and Lance Archer. And this was the best match of the night. This was a entertaining Falls Count Anywhere match. And the match started off with uh, Kenta sent his briefcase into Lance Archer's face. Omega ended up stopping away on John Moxley. Kenta then ended up shoving Omega away to stomp on Moxley. So Omega and Kenta were arguing uh, for a little bit. And because of that, Moxley ended up getting control and he ended up taking out uh, both Omega and Kenta. So Kenta end up uh, ditches uh, Lance Archer. Moxley end up kneeing Omega out to the floor. So Kenta and Moxley uh, were going back and forth uh, in the middle of the ring. Kenta was looking to go for the go to sleep. But Moxley end up looking to go for the paradigm shift. Omega end up smacking Moxley in the face with a garbage can. Kenny Omega then end up putting the trash can up on the ring post. So Lance Archer came back into the ring and he had a ladder and he ran over Omega and Kenta uh, with the ladder. Moxley then delivered the suicide dive on Kenta as Lance Archer was being up on Kenny Omega. So we had uh, Lance Archer choke slamming Kenny Omega uh, through Peter Avalon's uh, bed which uh, Kenta ended up hitting Peter Avalon with the go-to-sleep. So Lance Archer ended up uh, covering Kenny Omega, but Kenta ended up breaking it up. Moxley ended up grabbing Kenta and threw him into the barricade. And they made their way to the kitchen area. Moxley and Kenta were in the kitchen area. They were going back and forth. Kenta ended up hitting the DDT to... Moxley on a table, on a metal table. Archer and Omega finally get to the other uh, kitchen area. We had Omega end up throwing Lance Archer into a structure, a metal structure. Omega then end up throwing a garbage can at Lance Archer. So Moxley end up turning his attention to Kenny Omega 
And he ended up pinning Kenny Omega with a potato. There were like these sack, there was like the sack of potatoes. So we had Moxie and Omega make their way back to uh, ringside. Moxie ended up uh, taking out a kendo stick from under the ring. He ended up pinning Kenny Omega in his midsection. And then he cracked him over the back with the kendo stick. Moxley ended up going to leap off the middle rope. And he ended up taking the V-trigger from Kenny Omega. So Kenta and Lance Archer were battling on the stage. Omega then ended up delivering another V-trigger on Moxley. Which sent Moxley on the, uh, the timekeeper's table. So Lance Archer and Kenta were near the commentary uh, table. And of course Don Callis, I've got to mention, he was... Uh, doing commentary along with uh, Tony Schiavone, JR, and Excalibur. So Lance Archer was looking to, pow- to powerbomb Kenta. Kenta ended up dodging Lance Archer, and he ended up doing a uh, double foot stomp down on Moxley, which it ended up uh, partly breaking the uh, the timekeeper's table. So Omega ended up having the kendo stick and Archer ended up catching uh, the kendo stick. He ended up breaking the uh, the stick over his knee and he then choke slammed Kenny Omega. Lance Archer ended up taking Kenny Omega's wrist. He ended up walking the rope, walking with the ropes, hit a moonsault on him. And then the Good Brothers. Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson show up. Kenta end up delivering a spinning back fist on Lance Archer. And then uh, we had Jake Roberts end up doing a uh, short arm clothesline on Carl Anderson. Gallows end up uh, hitting Jake Roberts in the face. Omega was looking for to go for the V-trigger on Jake Roberts. But Moxley came in and hit Omega with a barbed wire bat. So Moxley then hit Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson uh, with the barbed wire bat also. Kenta then delivered the go-to-sleep on Moxley. Lance Archer then clotheslined Kenta. So the Good Brothers end up uh, delivering the Magic Killer to Lance Archer. And Kenny Omega then delivered the V-trigger to Archer. So Gallows and Anderson uh, help lift Lance Archer up on Kenny Omega's shoulders. Then Kenny Omega delivered the one-winged angel on Lance Archer. Went for the cover. And there you go. Kenny Omega and Kenta win the match. So post-match we had Kenta... End up being up on John Moxley on the floor. And that was how Dynamite went off the air tonight. But overall, this Falls Count Anywhere match was the best match of the night. This was very entertaining. And this is how a Falls Count Anywhere match is done. So, but overall, like I said, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable match. And overall, a very good dynamite tonight. But overall, that's it for my review of Dynamite. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up. Come subscribe. And until next video, which will be uh, the SmackDown review. So until then, I'll see you all later.